maybe it might be we we'll try to approach this as the, the the video of maybe it might work better. Maybe it might be we we'll try to approach this as oh, oh, the, okay. the the video of maybe it might work better. Okay. 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 What the chairs indicated in terms of uh, the, the struggle. Are you back, chair? Uh, but, but, uh, I, I, don't remember, that, I, I think it's in line with what the. Chair, chair, I would suggest that maybe Honourable Mui Mang takes over. Um, I, I know these things go. When, when you're sitting in the back, otherwise, we have to keep on doing this thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what then, I'm uh, let's, let's... Yes, chef, continue that. Uh, no, 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 continue. Uh, no, 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 continue, chef. Let's, let's, let us then take this opportunity yeah. to extend the word of welcome to all of you. Chair, I would suggest uh, that maybe one of our more takes over. Today's meeting. I know these uh, things go when you're sitting at the end of the month. The appreciation of uh, yeah. the time that we made. Um, thanks, Shri. Uh, we've got one apology from Honorable Matebula. Um, so far, we're just waiting for the rest of the officials to attend, Chair. Um, but let me just go to the, um, the the delegation list that we received. Um, the Deputy Minister will be attending the meeting on behalf of the Minister. Um, I'm not sure if the Deputy Minister is actually present. Um, with the last time I spoke to the PLO, she said that she was. I'm just waiting for her to attend. Um, in attendance from the department, we've got... Um, yeah, I don't actually see them reflected. I'm, I, I need assistance from the department to just indicate who is here, Chi. Okay, now let's, let's do that. Let's do that then. Uh, let's allow the department then to talk to us who is here and who will be giving the presentation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, uh, um, Annaline, I think you will take over. Good afternoon, Chair. My name is Dr. Annaline Shekhi. I am representing the delegation. Um, as Deputy Minister Majola will be leading the delegation, so I'm not sure if you want to proceed or you want to wait for him to join in the meeting. Uh, I think let's let's allow let's allow let's allow uh, the meeting to continue, and then the what the deputy what the deputy minister will then probably do, he will then have an opportunity uh, in uh, in our in his closing remarks to give uh, a message to the to, to the committee in terms of uh, the presentation that is before us. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Will the committee be flighting? Committee secretary be flighting the presentation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just to indicate to to honourable members that the the uh, scope of today's meeting is a presentation uh, on the retail clothing, textile, footwear, and leather master plan. And uh, the the uh, this master plan is quite critical because it is an integral part of the of the uh, reimagine uh, program uh, of, uh, of of the of the industrial strategy. So therefore, it will sort of give us a, a sense in terms of where we are uh, in terms of uh, the progress that we have made around the, the master plans and, uh, and also 
uh, its evolution uh, and uh, the rationale and where we are going and progress where we are. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. With your permission, may I put my camera off while I do the presentation? Uh, no problem. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Chair, honorable members of the committee, my fellow colleagues. Thank you for the opportunity to present the closing textile leather and footwear master plan to committee. Whilst the plan has been widely accepted, we would like to emphasize that the implementation is a continuous work in progress. And Chair, can we move to slide two? I want to introduce my team. With me, I have, well, my name is Dr. Annalene Chetty from the Industrial Competitiveness um, and Growth Branch. I am joined by my fellow colleagues, Ms. Elaine Smith, who's the Director of Clothing and Textiles, Dr. Jaywan Irkede, who's the Director of Leather and Footwear, I'm also joined by Mr. Mahendra Shanmugam, who's been appointed as the director for the project management office responsible for the implementation of the master plan. And we're supported by Ms. Tandi Pele, who is our chief director for metals. Can we move on to slide five? Chair, just to set the context for the master plan, success of the South African retail clothing, textile, leather and footwear master plan depends less on its content being 100% correct and more on whether key value chain stakeholders across both the pub public and private sectors uh, believes in the vision and objectives that have been set and are prepared to set aside legacy-based divisions and work together to achieve the outcomes that have been mutually agreed on. Just to provide a rationale for the master plan, the retail value chain is a major contributor to the South African economy with the clothing, textile, footwear and leather retail playing a much larger role than the manufacturing portion of the value chain. The value chain's GDP contributes to 74 billion while its, its employment contribution is 210,071. Based on South Africa's 2016 economic position, this equates to 1.7% contribution to GDP. In terms of the South African clothing, textile, leather, and footwear retailers, clothing, textile, leather, and footwear products are worth 70 billion in 2016, with 43 billion in clothing products, 12.7 in textiles, 100 and, sorry, 11.6 billion in footwear, and 2.6 billion in leather products. Imports typically dominate clothing, textile, footwear, and leather products at 53%. 53.9%, 56%, and 61%. If we can move on to slide six. So these are the main policy levers that have been in place up until the master plan and is currently still in place. It is the um, competitiveness program, which ran from 2009 to 2019, aimed at stabilizing industry and reducing job losses. There's also the designation of the clothing, textile, footwear, and leather products under the Preferential Procurement Policy Framework Act, which designated such products at 100% local content. And here we are presenting the master plan. We can move on to the next slide. So Chair, this particular slide sets the framework for the um, next slide. Can we move to the next slide? So whilst that is being put on, I will continue. So this is broadly the framework for the master plan, which is underpinned by a very strong foundation of sound institutional arrangement, as well as a strong legislative environment. It is supported by the strategic pillars of a strong ones, firstly, domestic market growth, secondly, value chain localization, Thirdly, competitiveness advance, advancement, value chain transformation, technology, and associated skills development. This is preframed by a solid vision, which is to create a sustainable and dynamic retail clothing, textile, footwear, leather chain that provides the customers compelling products and that is invested in growing 
local capabilities and employment. Can we move on to slide eight? So Chair, this is an indication of the social compacting framework, uh, which is made up of these particular stakeholders, which is our retailers, manufacturers, uh, government and labor. As I've indicated earlier, the real success of the master plan is the ability of all these role players to synchronize their Thank commitment you, and efforts towards achieving the master plan objectives. We can move on to the next slide. So Chair, this is merely a slide highlighting some of the key commitments and core actions of the master plan, and I will explain it in a little bit more detail in a later slide. We can move on. Uh, so the seven commitments are growing the local market, local sourcing, stopping illegal imports, tariffs and rebates, incentive program extensions, like your productive incentive program and your competitiveness improvement program, Production uh, flexibility and value chain transformation. Can we move on to the next slide? Just to give you an indication, Chair, of the status of the master plan to date, the master plan was signed at the President's Investment Conference in November 2019. To date, um, there were seven task teams that were set up in terms of institutional arrangements. The project management is established under the leadership of uh, Mahendra Shanmugam and the project management forum met on the 9th of March, 2019. You'll recall, Chair, that we went into lockdown after that. Um, there was also an establishment of an executive oversight committee made up of various stakeholders, largely from industry. If we can move on to the next slide. Chair, I think, um, so these are the commitments that were made to the master plan and to realizing the master plan. And if you look at uh, the numbers, I think uh, these industry commitments made to the sector is a strong indication of the acceptance of the master plan and buy-in from the industry. And if you recall my earlier comments, I said that the success of the master plan will not be based on the accuracy of the content, but rather the stakeholder buy-in and commitment to achieve its objectives. And another reason why we should be excited by these figures, which is 6.7 billion committed by the sector towards, uh, sorry, committed by the industry towards the sector, is that we're currently operating in a very constrained public sector financial environment. And these commitments will definitely help to improve the sector and help to supplement government's very limited resources. We can move on to the next slide. So I've already given you an indication of who the stakeholder master plans. I'm not going to go into it in detail. I'm assuming that I'm going to take the document as read. So it's basically the manufacturers, the workers, and government. We can move on to the next slide. So Chair, this is basically an indication of the delivery of on commitments. Um, the first commitment was to grow the local market for local CTFL products, if you don't mind me using the acronym, uh, develop and market local brands and labels, upgrade local design and manufacturing, manufacturing competitiveness, extend and scale up by local campaigns. The second commitment is increasing local um, procurement for the sector, which is to grow local um, sector procurement to 69 billion, 65% share of retail sales. Um, the next one is to stem the flow of illegal imports. Um, many of you would know that the most, uh, the biggest problem plaguing this particular industry was the influx of illegal imports and it impacted on our local um, manufacturers and local supply. The fourth commitment is the strategic use of tariffs and rebates. 
Um, the fifth one is to extend the CIP and PIP in an appropriate format for three years. This is currently being done, and I'll give you an update on that in, later on in the presentation. Commitment six is to align production cap uh, capacity to sales cycles. Commitment seven is looking at value chain transformation. We can move on to the next slide. Just to give you an uh, indication of progress to date, as I mentioned, um, with the onset of COVID and lockdown, it did impact quite a bit on the sector. However, we're, we're back on track and we're definitely achieving progress in implementation, but we need to see the whole process as a continued state of um, work in progress. So in terms of the first commitment, what's been done to date is we've been working with proudly South Africa and all the stakeholders to drive localization efforts through the extension of the buy local campaigns through media and marketing campaigns as well. We're experiencing challenges with some of the retailers who are reluctant to drive localization efforts. However, we are working on that and trying to extend their commitments. The next um, area is looking at increasing local uh, procurement. COVID has impacted on retailers being able to achieve their targets. However, increased effort has been directed at the localization effort of personal and protection um, protective equipment, and I'll go into that a little bit later. The other area, and I mentioned that it has been to date quite a significant challenge for the industry, is stemming the flow of illegal imports, and to that end, an interagency working group was established within government to tackle the whole issue of illicit trade. It includes the DTIC, National Treasury, South African Police Services, National Prosecuting Authority, uh, South African Revenue Services, and the International Trade Administration Commitment. Um, Chair, this is just one uh, committee working on Leave, addressing one challenge or one area of the commitment, and you will see from the numbers um, how much can actually be achieved when you pull your resources together and you have targeted integrated efforts to tackle any particular issue. The issue of stemming the flow of illegal Im export imports has been an issue that has plagued the sector for a long time. And Chair, you look at the numbers and I think it speaks for itself in terms of how much has been achieved in a relatively short space of time. We'll go into the next slide. I'll go into a little bit more detail of what's been achieved between September 2019 and February 2020. There's been 418 seizures finalized, valued to 79.3 million on various clothing items not compliant in terms of value, origin, quantity, or tariffs. There's been 105 seizures finalized, valued at 77.8 million with 18,905 various counterfeit, counterfeit clothing items seized, 381 seizures finalized, valued at 1.1 million, and equating to 134,501 counterfeit footwear. Seized imported clothing valued at 6.7 million, destroyed by SARS in November 2019. Chair, I went into a little bit more detail on that just to give you an indication of how much potential this master plan has to be able to achieve a lot of progress in addressing many of the challenges that were identified during this process. Go to the next slide. We're looking at the fourth commitment, which is the strategic use of tariffs and rebates. ITAC has published a notice to investigate the potential of a launch of a rebate facility for textiles and apparel manufacturing in Botswana, Lesotho, and Lesotini. Um, finalization of the proposal with industry stakeholders and offtake commitments and potential textile rebate commitments. The fifth one is extend the CIP and PIP in an appropriate format. Um, we've already been having a number of industry engagement uh, and looking at a proposal that's already been drafted. It's currently being worked on with both industry and labor, together with the ITC and the DTIC. And in the next few weeks or month, we will have a final outcome. Then on the sixth one is the value chain transformation. So the transformation is about um, investigating 
technology disruption, it's investigating skills development and bring about transformation in the sector. And this is being done by um, developing joint plans with various departments, such as your Department of Higher Education and Training um, Productivity Essay. Also looking at how we can use the Black Industrialist Program more effectively to ensure transformation of this particular sector. If we can go on to the next slide. Um, Chair, you know with the introduction of COVID, a number of retailers and manufacturers were not able to, um, to continue business as usual, and many of them had repurposed their uh, businesses to be able to supply masks and other types of PPE. And to that effect, we've intensified our efforts towards the industry to ensure localization of PPE and therefore avoid situations where we have a large influx of cheap uh, products from China. And at the same time, allowing for our local manufacturing um, sector to be able to grow, especially during this difficult time of a pandemic. And these are some of the support measures we've put in place. If we can move on to the next slide. So some of the support measures that we've put in place, we're basically supporting various products such as your surgical and consumer masks, respirators, medical textiles, leather and footwear products, gloves, body bags. And our support to the industry was in various forms, such as sourcing and ensuring the availability of raw material in South Africa, rebate support and tariff protection, testing, certification and standards, expansion of production, matching of demand and supply, uh, visibility of tenders and awards, especially from local um, provincial governments. Chair, I must emphasize that was quite a struggle. We, we weren't successful in trying to convince um, some of the procurement entities to purchase locally. And we're hoping that in the next few weeks, we're going to be able to achieve that. Also adhering um, to procurement regulations and the issuing of timely orders by the organs of state. If we can move on to the next slide. Chair, just in terms of um, the master plan and the provinces, uh, the project management office has already established contact with a number of uh, provincial authorities as well as metros and engagement has started with them and looking at how um, they could benefit and participate in the whole master plan implementation process. If you would look at uh, and we continue to do that, continue to engage and ensuring that we're relevant, we ensure that the provinces are involved and, you know, on a significant scale. Uh, in terms of the last slide, this is basically the provincial spread of the PIP recipients, which is our incentive program. Chair, I'm not sure if um, there are any questions at this stage. I will take a round of questions. I do have my team who is supporting me, and um, they will also help with answering some of the questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Teddy, for the for the uh, presentation. Uh, let's probably uh, check uh, whether the the deputy minister is here, uh, because we started before we could uh, uh, lay the foundation for Teddy to to present. I suspect this would be the right uh, uh, time and opportunity for the deputy minister just to 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 probably give context to the to the presentation that has been made before allowing other members to make some inputs. DM? Over to you, DM Majola. <coughs> and our apology you, for you. starting yeah. before you, you could log in. Uh, but uh, we know that uh, it's a struggle sometimes, but also we are stretched all over. Over to you, DM. Thanks, 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 Chairperson. Um, it is me who must apologize. I, I was struggling to move uh, from one meeting to join your meeting, Chairperson. And good afternoon to all the honorable members and uh, uh, officials from the Select Committee, uh, officials from the department uh, led by Dr. Chetty. 
I won't be long, Chair. I just need to thank uh, Dr. Chetty for the presentation. Uh, just, uh, uh, Chair, to say that, uh, as we are pointing out, uh, this is but one master plan. In January this year, when uh, 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 we had the um, cabinet Lekhota, immediately after that, President directed us that uh, first we should identify key sectors to grow uh, the economy. And on the basis of the agreed sectors, we must develop very clear master plans for each of those uh, sectors. So the clothing, uh, textiles, uh, 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 footwear and leather master plan is one of those. In some of these, such as agriculture, we have worked with other uh, departments uh, to ensure that we can finalize the, the master plans. So, um, um, Chairperson, uh, this particular uh, master plan is particularly important because of the history of uh, um, the, the sector and the fact that uh, over the, the, the last uh, few years, this sector has uh, suffered because uh, of a uh, decline in manufacturing as a result, as a result of uh, global factors in particular. So it is, we're now focusing on it to ensure partly that we rebuild manufacturing capacity and that uh, we can expand that uh, the, the local uh, 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 retail to ensure that uh, we change the composition of uh, uh, retail sales to increase uh, more domestic uh, 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 supply and and purchase. So, uh, Chairperson, uh, uh, Dr. Chetty has already pointed out uh, that uh, we have now established a, a program uh, uh, management office to ensure that we can get down to the real business of implementation. Uh, and obviously we've been affected very negatively by the COVID, by the onset of a COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so as we implemented the plan now going forward in the context of building, rebuilding the economy in an inclusive way, we're going to have to ensure uh, that uh, we take into account the impact uh, of that COVID-19 has had uh, on the sector. We must say that, as uh, uh, Dr. Chetty pointed out, uh, we, we're happy that uh, um, during the, the, this pandemic, uh, we're able to uh, calibrate um, uh, domestic capabilities to ensure that uh, the sector can contribute so, uh, towards the production of personal protective uh, equipment. So we have set very uh, uh, ambitious targets, as we would see in the in the master plan, uh, and uh, we uh, will be working together with the different sectors. As the minister says, this is a it's a different way of working to ensure that there are partnerships. Uh, he calls this. Uh, uh, each uh, uh, partner brings something to what he calls uh, uh, bring and bry. So you would see that uh, the government has made very clear commitments in terms of what we, we should do. And one of the immediate tasks we need to carry out is to ensure that we can uh, uh, um, um, strengthen our capacity uh, to to for customs uh, control and enforcement. Um, the, the trade union movement has committed itself to ensure that they can work in a flexible way to be able to take account of uh, the production cycle so that when this production cycle is up, they can have a flexible uh, 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 arrangements uh, to ensure that they can support uh, the growth of, of the sector. So are the retailers who have committed to ensure that they can uh, uh, expand the uh, uh, local uh, uh, purchase. So thanks very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Uh, we, we will ensure that uh, 
we do everything we can to ensure that all the stakeholders can focus on uh, carrying out the commitments that have been made. And, and for our part as government, uh, we'll be able, doing everything to ensure that we can uh, support this sector to grow again. So thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Chair. And once again, uh, uh, sorry for joining you late. Uh, and thanks to Dr. Chetty uh, for the presentation on behalf of uh, the department. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, thank you, DM, for that uh, uh, overview, uh, which uh, indeed also located was able to locate uh, the the presentation that was made by uh, Dr. Chetty within the broader. Uh, political uh, uh, framework and commitment of the, 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 the government. Uh, I will then, uh, without any waste of time, uh, uh, open the floor for engagement uh, from the honorable members. I just want to check whether is the chair still struggling. Uh, honorable Hai. Uh, welcome, honorable Dango. Uh, let me then uh, open the floor for engagement. Uh, I'll start with uh, with uh, Tim. Let me just say that Honorable Khai had a difficulty connecting this morning. I'm not too sure if he's still experiencing the same problem. However, my question to the DM is, are we actually ensuring that labeling of, for the origin of products is actually carefully being monitored? I think it's important that the country of origins labeling uh, be uh, very effective. Because sometimes I would walk into Woolworths and I would see products from a Middle Eastern country and the product we produce ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Dango. Tim? Chair, um, <clears throat> I don't have too much to add. Um, safe to say that I, I, I believe we're in support of any... <laughs> Apologise for the noise in the background, um, Chair. I, I, I thank the the minister and the officials for the presentation. Um, I think we are fully in support of anything that supports local producers, and that we um, we definitely stand against our local companies, especially the textile and clothing industry, being closed down by, um, frankly, carnivorous attacks from other parts of the world that frankly produce textiles and clothing at ridiculous prices on the back of effectively what could be called slave labor. And I think we need as a committee to take a very, very clear stance on that, is that we support fair trade. 
And if we are competing in a world in textiles and clothing with other countries that are not competing fairly, that are not looking after their workers properly, um, that cannot be countenanced. And we should be competing in an environment where we know that our competitors are treating their people in the correct fashion and, um, and, and applying the correct work standards. And it's a completely unfair playing field if you're competing against other countries that are not um, paying close attention to the welfare of their, of their workers and, and many other factors, Chair. So I do support any initiatives and I thank the department for this sort of initiative that places um, ethics back in the textile and clothing industry and allows local producers to be competitive. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Tim. Honorable Lund, I saw you had your, 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 your hand raised. Yeah, yeah Chair, I'm going to um, do it like this. Hopefully my network is going to work with us today. Um, I, I fully endorse and support what uh, Honorable Browter said. I said, um, the one thing that I do want to just flag for the committee, um, and you remember a while back, we had this proudly South African campaign and uh, buying local. And uh, I do think that uh, when we do those kind of campaigns, it's also very important that we lead by example so that uh, when we do support um, and buy, uh, we don't buy the Italian brands or the French brands and uh, we've got some uh, uh, very capable um, and uh, people that design and make clothing locally and uh, I think that's something that as a committee uh, chairperson, we must also then encourage um, and also hold our leaders to account so that they do support locally. But in other words, um, I am in full support of this. We used to be one of the market leaders um, uh, when it came to, came to this. And unfortunately, uh, we took a back seat and it will be great if we can take up a bit more of the market space. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Lund. Honorable uh, Bashoff. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm echoing the sentiments of my two colleagues that spoke before me. I would just like to know, um, I see in the presentation that um, they spoke of the um, work that's going to be done in conjunction with various departments of government. I'd just like to know, what are we going to do to ensure that at our borders, um, the people with illegal um, clothing, et cetera, et cetera, do not get through? Because we are aware that our borders are rather porous. So if we could just have a look at that. And then what steps will be taken to ensure that our whistleblowers are given the protection that they need and then I'm very concerned about the visibilities of tenders and, war and awards, uh, yeah, and awards from our provinces and local municipalities. Um, the presenter said that it's a huge problem and that they will shortly be in a position to address this issue. If she could just expatiate on that, it would be great. And um, Thank you very much again for the presentation and well done and good luck. Thank you, thank you Honorable Boshoff. Uh, is the chair back, Honorable Khai? Yes, I am. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me because I can hear all of you, but I don't know yes, if you can hear me. Yes, you can you now. You are very, very, very clear, Chair. Over to you. Oh. Okay, okay, no, thank you very much. I've been hearing you all the time, but they, unfortunately, you couldn't hear me. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, let, let me start by saying, uh, also echoing the, the words of the deputy uh, minister, uh, indicating that this is one uh, amongst uh, many other uh, master plans. We, we agree with that, because as a committee, we agree that we will be inviting the department uh, to come and present other uh, master plans. So this one is, is there for the start. 
<clears throat> Chair, my, my question uh, uh, is, is one is on the issue of uh, the imports. I'm, I'm worried about uh, the, the big percentage uh, in, in terms of the, the imports uh, that we are getting uh, in the country, uh, 50, more than 50 percent in some situation, others are more than 60 percent. Uh, despite the fact that uh, we have uh, tariffs and, re and rebates. Uh, so I I'm, I'm very worried uh, about that particular aspect because uh, uh, it would mean there's a uh, rebates and uh, must go on forever. And uh, my, 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 my question therefore is uh, how do we make sure, are there any monitoring mechanism to, to ensure that uh, companies are not only just uh, enjoying these uh, uh, rebates and tariffs, and they're not contributing uh, to the objectives uh, of the master plan uh, in achieving the targets with regard to uh, growing the, the sales, uh, the, the local share uh, of the sales, uh, growing uh, the number of jobs, uh, but also the, the figures uh, that are indicated in the master plans, uh, whether it be the jobs or the the growing the sales, local share, uh, you know, wh whether these are annual uh, targets. Uh, uh, if not, why can't we then have the uh, annual target so that we, we can monitor uh, uh, the the achievement. Uh, I'm, I'm happy also with the achievement uh, on the commitments of government, the work that it is doing to ensure uh, that there are no uh, illegal um, imports. Uh, the, there was a slice that uh, was talking to that. I was very impressed and uh, also encouraged uh, uh, government uh, to, to continue ensuring. Was, uh, we, we were worried that uh, during the time of the ban of cigarettes, there were cigarettes that were coming in, despite the fact that there was a, a ban uh, on tobacco uh, and, and cigarettes. So it, it makes you now feel that perhaps it would then government be able to, to stop these illegal imports if it was a problem to, to stop uh, uh, the, the, the illicit uh, tobacco and cigarettes coming to the country. Yeah, if uh, Chair, perhaps uh, uh, we Ms. Chair can uh, just give us an indication what uh, the the this uh, competition, what is it? Uh, is, is the, this that is is the uh, the city CP. If uh, just a little bit of detail, the one that is going to be extended for for another three years that has been on until uh, 2019. Just the details as to how is it incentivizing the, the industry, uh, if we could uh, get a detail with regard to that. But the, the last point uh, is only the local campaign. You know, when this campaign, the buy local campaign, when it started, uh, there was a vibe around it, everybody supporting it. Uh, but it's, it's very quiet now. I see that there are commitments even from the side of labor with regard to the bio but you, you, you just don't feel it uh, uh, on the, the crowd. Even those, uh, when, when the problem in South Africa came was established. Even uh, again, your problem is started. Some institutions and uh, the, the board is that we support it. Yes, Honorable Chair. Uh, they, 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 I know, know my, 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 so can team Ramparet used to be one of the signatories uh, yeah, uh, they probably the South African the campaign. But now if you can see oh my gosh. Oh, okay, let me leave it at that here. Can yeah, you hear me? Can you hear me? Just to wrap up the last the last uh, three three to four points that you were making. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? 
Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you, but you can hear me. Yeah, I think let's let's for now. I think we have made uh, 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 we have made ourselves very clear in terms of the number of points that we have raised. Uh, I suspect that the 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 the, 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 the team. Yes, we can hear you. Maybe we can just wrap up the last three to four points that we were making. Hello. Yes, yes. Honorable Hai, you can just wrap up. I don't know. Our people company is not that very strong. Chest. Thank you. Thank you. That have raised their own opinion. Yes, Honorable Hai. I'm, I was saying uh, I'm glad. I hope that uh, the points that I've raised have been uh, captured. Uh, yeah, but I think the, the, the last three to five points that you were making were not audible enough. You can just wrap up those points and then uh, you. Oh. Will die. oh, okay. No, I was saying that uh, if uh, uh, Ms. Chetty can uh, maybe elaborate uh, uh, on the CTCP, the one that is going to be extended for another three years, uh, what is the benefit to the industry? Uh, and the other point uh, uh, that I was uh, making was regard to the buy local campaign. I don't know if that uh, has been captured. And the other point that I, I had raised is the role of uh, uh, the monitoring of companies, whether they are sticking uh, to to the objective uh, of the of the master plan. Uh, in terms of playing their role, or they will just be only happy with the tariffs and, and rebates, as well as the other incentives that are provided as a result of the master plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Khai. Uh, my, 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 before I hand over to the Deputy Minister and the team, is uh, the, I think the last slide that speaks to the, to the uh, master plan and provinces. The one that's, that, that starts uh, with uh, the, uh, provincial spread of PIP recipients. I think it will be it it it, it, it will just uh, assist us obviously given the nature of uh, of, of of the MCOP to uh, elaborate more uh, on the on, on on both the master plan and the provinces so that at least uh, uh, we are able to get a sense in terms of the interventions that are made, uh, particularly with, the, with with specific references to to the provinces. Thank you. Over to you, Deputy Minister, and the team. Thanks, Chair. If, if I may start, um, I'll ask uh, uh, Dr. Chetty to add. Honorable Dango, thanks very much for, for that uh, question. It's an important uh, uh, issue of uh, that we should uh, deal with of the labeling of products. Uh, I think just at a technical level, what in, in terms of what more can we do to ensure that uh, all products on our shelves are properly labeled? Uh, the the team led by uh, Dr. Chetty can can add there. But uh, just to, to make a broad uh, statement on the problems of labeling and the, and the countries of our region. This is a big issue that uh, we've got to deal with as a country right now in terms of the products we, we're dealing with. And in the context of uh, the African continental free trade area, this is going to be a very big issue. Uh, because uh, we're going to face very serious problems of transshipment, where products are made in other countries, uh, dumped in the continent, labeled, and then sent uh, duty-free across the continent. It's going to be a very, very big problem with that we're going to have to deal with. So the issue of the proper labeling of, of, of products and monitoring it's an issue that uh, we will have to step our action around to ensure that uh, the, the countries of or region are properly labeled on our products. 
So that's the <clears throat> the first uh, thing. Uh, the secondly, uh, honourable protest. Um, with regard to the issues of ethics you raise and uh, some of the difficulties of the products we get from other countries, uh, this is an important issue. Uh, Minister Patel has been dealing with this, and uh, to be frank, in particular in this set, the biggest problem we have had, in addition to India and other countries, the biggest challenge we have had uh, is with regard to products uh, from China. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the minister on various occasions has raised sharply with the Chinese uh, embassy and the Minister uh, of Trade of China, this met. There are several aspects to it. Uh, the, the first one is dumping, uh, and related to it is under invoicing. Uh, in addition to, to those problems of uh, countries where they produce uh, products at a lower cost because of the cost of labor in those countries. Uh, we have had very serious problems of uh, dumping of products in our country and under voicing, especially of goods from uh, our, our counterparts in China. The minister has raised this matter quite sharply, including in the ministers of BRICS. It is an issue that we are tending to. We are losing a lot of uh, revenue as a country as a result of uh, uh, undervoicing that is currently going on. It's an issue that the department is attending to. Um, with regard to uh, honorable Don, uh, the buy local campaign, the point you, you're making there, we agree with you uh, fully. Uh, so it is an issue that uh, we've got uh, to work with uh, industry ensure that we can uh, increase uh, the composition of the products we're consuming, that most of those can come from uh, uh, local manufacturers. Uh, Honorable Boshoff, uh, the work with various departments, it's a difficult matter that you're raising. You know, in last year that uh, the inter um, uh, uh, agency working group did uh, uh, conduct some raids and we have been successful. Uh, it was useful at a symbolic level and also substantially because quite a substantial amount of goods were seized. But we're going to have to build a um, sustainable capacity to ensure that we can control our borders uh, properly. So the inter-agency uh, working group uh, of the different agencies of government is working on that matter. The issue of our borders is a big problem. Uh, we've got to work with the Department uh, of Home Affairs and other departments to ensure that uh, we can uh, protect uh, our country from illegal flow of, uh, of goods. So it's an important matter that we continue to pay attention to. Uh, we have made some progress, but uh, we've got to do more in this regard to ensure that we have a, a permanent and sustainable solution uh, with regard to um, uh, our border control. Uh, Honorable uh, Hai, um, yes, indeed, uh, we, we will come back when the select committee asks us to come and present on other master plans. Um, that uh, we have finalized and those that we are currently working on. Uh, the issue of uh, imports that you raise, uh, we've got uh, to, to address because uh, these imports uh, eat on uh, uh, the domain, on jobs in the, in the local economy. So we've got uh, to, to address that. So there are two problems with regard to import. The, the, the first problem is just at the level of the composition of trade. Uh, if you look at uh, many of the countries, except those in the in, in, in SADC, that uh, the composition of trade is very skewed with regard to the fact that we're importing very less 
than what uh, uh, more than what we export. So we've got to. So it tells you that uh, we're consuming uh, too much of what we don't produce as a country. So that's the first thing that we've got to address. So that speaks to uh, expanding local capacity. So that's the first matter that we need to deal with. The second re relates to illegal imports, uh, as, uh, as you have pointed out, uh, Honorable Kai, and the uh, Honorable Bosch has spoken to this as well. So that's an issue that uh, we've got to, to deal with as well. And you're quite right, there was quite an upset during the ban on cigarettes uh, of uh, illegal uh, smuggling of cigarettes into the country. So that uh, the, illicit, the illicit trade of cigarettes uh, is going to have to be rolled back because it did expand during the, the ban on, on cigarettes. So it's an issue that we need to pay attention to. Uh, with regard to the, the extension, uh, um, uh, uh, Dr. Chetty did speak about that, uh, and I would like her to come back to give uh, more um, uh, clarity and details on that, including on the bi-local campaign. I must say, Chair, when uh, Honorable Kai was talking about the bi-local campaign, we started to have difficulties uh, of hearing him, so but I can... Uh, ask uh, 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 Dr. Chetty to uh, speak to that. On monitoring of companies, the program uh, management office will have to help us do this, uh, Honorable Khai. Uh, we agree with you that uh, we can't simply uh, provide incentives to companies, uh, but there's no pre quo that uh, the, the, the the companies would not uh, ensure that we can uh, concentrate on building domestic production capacity and therefore increase the number of local jobs. So it's an issue that uh, we've got uh, to, to attend to. At this stage, we quite uh, sure that uh, the, our, our, the stakeholders, our partners, labor and uh, the uh, the industry is quite committed to ensuring that the master plan uh, succeeds. So we'll have to ensure that uh, there's a proper monitoring uh, to ensure that all of the partners uh, comply with the commitments that uh, we've each made. Uh, with regard to the provincial uh, spread chair, uh, the team uh, from the department can add there. Just to say that uh, we have now started a process uh, of working with the uh, different MECs uh, and the officials at the department uh, as well, led by the DG, has been working with the HODs in the provinces. We're now trying to focus our work and ensure that we can coordinate uh, more uh, from the side of the department with provinces in a targeted way so that we can help uh, uh, provinces with the programs uh, that they, they are implementing. So it, this is uh, something that uh, in, uh, in our next uh, meeting of uh, with the uh, MECs, we will we will take forward. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And can I can if I ask with your permission that uh, the Dr. Chetty and the team should add on the some of the issues that uh, haven't. Uh, uh, covered uh, sufficiently. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, dear. Uh, let's uh, uh, agree uh, to, uh, Dr. Chetty to take the stage, center stage. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for your comprehensive responses thus far. Uh, we also want to thank the committee so far for your overwhelming support. And we look forward to your continued support in the implementation of this master plan, as well as other master plans we will be presenting to you. Um, Chair, I am supported by my technical team, and I'd like to give them an opportunity to participate. So in just in terms of your questions, looking at labeling and um, the origins, uh, Dr. J. Irkade will respond to that question in terms of the CTCP, as well as the distribution in the provinces. Um, Elaine Smith, who's our Director of Clothing and Textiles, will take us through. And in terms of the other questions where you looked at working with various departments and protecting our borders, um, the issue of whistleblowing and protection of whistleblowers, 
looking at the provinces and the municipality tenders, the imports and the concern around the high percentages, um, the buy local campaign, as well as the monitoring of companies. I'm hoping I captured all of that. Uh, Mr. Mahindra Shanmugam will take us through. He is the director of the project management office and responsible for driving many of these issues. So we'll start with Dr. J and we'll move on to Elaine and then to Mahindra. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, uh, honorable member, honorable chair. Uh, good afternoon, deputy minister. Uh, with regard to the uh, uh, the labeling legislation, uh, we work very closely with uh, Commissioner Metezi Mabuza at uh, National Consumer Commission. Uh, she is responsible for the uh, uh, the Consumer Protection Act, and uh, we have regular meeting with the commissioner. And uh, uh, there are a couple of things we have escalated recently. Uh, in past, if anything is detained uh, at our borders by custom, which doesn't adhere to the, uh, the labeling legislation, they used to send intimation to NCC. And at time, they used to just give a release note. Uh, and that wasn't monitored properly. So what we have done, Chair, so far, for last two years, we have now included uh, the uh, textile clothing, leather footwear, particularly in the protected and prohibited list of import uh, under SARS and custom. It means that anything detained at the, the border, if it doesn't adhere to the Consumer Protection Act labeling legislation, it must be returned to the country of origin. Uh, in past, these goods were allowed. They used to receive a uh, note from NCC, release note. And at time, uh, these goods were allowed to be sold to any other country uh, on the continent. So uh, both these practices have been completely stopped now. Uh, a month before, we have reviewed about 34 cases uh, in collaboration with Custom and uh, National Consumer Commission. And uh, most of those goods are detained. And we are making sure that most of goods will be returned to the country of origin. So that's how far we are with regard to the uh, uh, the uh, Consumer Protection Act. Uh, in in relation to your uh, the illegal import, we are very closely working with SARS and Custom. Uh, Custom has a challenge uh, under GRAT approved uh, protocol. Uh, there are six valuation methods we have reviewed. But currently, because of lack of system uh, and the automation, currently SARS is not able to use other four methods effectively. So uh, as a team, uh, we have then recommended the use of kind of a blockchain methodology uh, that can automate the whole process. And uh, uh, basically, it has been widely acknowledged by SARS. Uh, the proof of concept is with executives and we receive their commitment, in future we'll have more automation. So uh, anything that will come through any border, whether it is road or sea, at the border post, uh, the more automated system will be av available in terms of import valuation. Also, we are closely working with CIPC with regard to profit act. So uh, there, is, there is currently quite a lot of work uh, uh, that need to be done together with CIPC, how we can arrest counterfeits coming into the country. Thank you, Chair. Elaine Smith. Thank you, Chair, um, Honourable Minister and members, colleagues. Um, I will be addressing the Clothing Textile Competitiveness Program. Um, it has been, well, 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 we're thinking of changing the name to Clothing Textile Footwear and Leather competitiveness program because it actually has uh, included the footwear and leather sector um, basically from the start. Um, the way that it supports the industry is by um, supporting interventions that will improve their competitiveness and these relate to people, process, product, market development, capital equipment, and te uh, technology demonstration. 
Um, of course, this program has come to an end, so we are reviewing it, and it ha it's been being adapted to address COVID-19 related uh, the related impact from from this pandemic, um, which will probably uh, move us towards something like an interest rate subsidy. Um, there's also a cluster program, so those are the type of um, ways in which the incentive supports the industry and it is aimed towards sustainability in terms both socially, environmentally and financially, um, uh, hoping to stabilize and, and hopefully also grow eventually um, the sector and also jobs. Uh, as far as the spread is concerned in the provinces, this is uh, this is related to the production incentive, which has been running over a 10 year period. Um, this is basically just um, a typical spread or well, the typical spread according to where the, the sectors are located or the manufacturers are located. Um, all the manufacturers are allowed equally to apply in, irrespective of where they are based. Um, but you will find historically that the bigger, the biggest part of these uh, clothing, textile, footwear and leather sectors uh, or manufacturers have been located in the Western Cape um, and KZN. And then after that, um, Gauteng and um, Limpopo is also growing, but there's also a portion in the Eastern Cape. So um, typically it used to basically always be Western Cape and KZN, but um, the others are also uh, showing some growth. Um, so there's no particular reason for that. It's just, uh, I think the, the way I think where the ports are located and the way historically that these um, sectors have been developed. Uh, I hope those addresses the, the questions correctly. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Chete? Uh, no. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Deputy Minister, uh, honourable members. Uh, my name is Mahendra. I'll respond to those other issues. You, you, you. Not very, not very, is, um, not very audible. As the honourable member said, it's very imperative that South Africans and especially our citizens join the call. Yeah. Dr. Chetty, Mr. Mahendra is yeah. not very, very Yes, um, I've let him know, Chair, um, that is not audible. Okay. Uh, is there any other... Can you hear me now? Uh, 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 I mean... Still a challenge, Mr. Mahendra? Hi, can you hear me? Let me try to change... Sorry, I think yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, you are muted now. Can you unmute yourself? Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Hi, Chair. Yes. So, taking heed from the Honorable Member's earlier comment saying that our public representatives uh, must support the buy local and in, and, and the, the call to support our local industries by, you know, purchasing from the clothing or textile industry, th uh, this would be very um, imperative to the master plan. Um, as you would have noticed, the uh, Proudly South African um, Organization and Institute, which is a part of the DTIC and the brainchild of President Mandela, has recently launched its buy local campaign with uh, uh, Mr. John Carney as the lead there. Uh, in the coming weeks, there will be a specific clothing, textile, footwear and leather buy local campaign that the Proudly South Africa colleagues will be launching to drive demand um, of local products from, the, from, from our society. Uh, with that, we've been having uh, many conversations with all the stakeholders, including Woolworths, 
who are trying to onshore some of their new production lines. For example, Woolworths will now be starting a new baby clothing line located in Port Chepchen, a new factory that will be employing about 200 new employees. And this is part of the master plans drive that the deputy minister spoke about and how we monitor and evaluate the impact of the industry to create jobs and grow our economy. Uh, to the point about the monitoring and evaluation, yes, we have uh, very clear monitoring uh, within the master plan to ensure that the localization efforts that as promised at our presidential conference in 2019 is committed and upheld and adhered. Uh, with that, we have um, each industry stakeholder and the manufacturing sector has relayed their specific targets confidentially to the ministry and to the DTIC. And then we check that and evaluate uh, their progress. Considering COVID-19, there has been some sluggishness and of course the economic impact of many of those targets, but we are adjusting and with the industry uh, moving forward into how we now progress and matching it to the cycles. Um, Regarding the value chain and imports and, and, and how the imports is affecting us, as uh, my colleague Jay mentioned, the interagency working group is now looking at advanced technology such as blockchain technology, uh, country of origin there within the system so that when it come, the products come here, there's not a, an undervaluation of the product and also not illegal products coming into consignment that enter our borders. Uh, the interagency working group is also upgrading how its border controls is done, working with SACU, um, and then working towards supporting uh, the implementation of the protocols that has been identified. Um, regarding the provinces and how we look at the provinces and the tenders, uh, Chair, there has been, as you will have noticed in the media, many issues regarding our public sector procurement and instruction note five that was caused a lot of confusion and all the publications now. Working with the National Treasury and, the, uh, and our departments, uh, we've been trying to ensure that um, public sector procurement adheres to the 100% designated local content product, which is clothing, textiles, footwear and leather. It falls into 100% designated in terms of the triple PFA and the uh, Public Sector Financial Management Act. Um, there has been many problems within some institutions who uh, just in, for the lack of better words, um, not familiarity with the legislation and having to be informed and educated on the legislation. The DTIC is custodian of the legislation and with the procurement industrial procurement sector, we have been monitoring and working with the National Treasury to strengthen some of the monitoring and evaluation tools. Um, then to the Con the idea of the provinces and working with the master plan, as uh, my colleague Anlin had mentioned, that we are working with the provinces to identify collaboration within their budget allocation to strengthen the value chain within the provinces, KZN being one case in point, with all the investment arms and Gauteng and um, the Western Cape. Um, there has been communication and conversations to this point and alignment to the master plan. Master plan. Uh, on another point, Chair, the task team of skills and productivity um, has begun. So this task team specifically looks at the value chain and looking at the job growth and the impact of technology into the sector in the coming years. Um, as you're aware, uh, our, our shores will not be uh, unaffected by the increase in technology and intelligence. And in this clothing sector, if we create jobs now in terms of the jobs that has been in existence um, previously, without looking at the impact of technology, we will be left with a very um, problematic situation in the coming years. So the task team on skills and productivity development has already started looking at how artificial intelligence and the skill sets that will be needed to go into the sector so that we can thrive in the coming years. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I think I'll end on that note. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chetli, is your delegation uh now. <laughs> yes, Chair, I think we've answered all of your questions. I'm hoping the committee is satisfied with the responses. Thank you. I saw the, the hand of the chairperson of the select committee, uh, Amara Wakai. I suspect uh, uh, the hand was in relation to the point that the DM has raised to say at a time when uh, there was disrupt, disruption, uh, there's a point that was arriving. So let me go back to Amara Wakai just to to allow him uh, an opportunity to reiterate the point that uh, was not very audible. Honorable Khai? Uh, 
Nadine Zuri is honorable high on. I think he's not connected, Chair. Okay, no, I think it's fine then. Uh, and then on that note, uh, maybe just let me just check uh, from uh, honorable members whether is there any follow up that honorable members would want to to make. Uh, honorable Dango? Any follow up? Uh, no follow up from me, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Dango. Honorable uh, Pratisat? Thank you so much. Honorable Lund? Chair, I'm covered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Brashov? I want to believe that uh, Honorable Boshoff is uh, also covered. Uh, and then uh, on that note, it looks like uh, we we have uh, we have the department has uh, sufficiently responded to the to the uh, engagements and uh, characteristic questions that were that were that were posed to to to, to the team. Uh, and uh, maybe what we could do, maybe just to check from the deputy minister, any. Uh, party note. Yes, dear. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Chair. I've, I've had to change positions. I was beginning to have the difficulties that Honorable Kai is having. Um, <laughs> Chairperson, thanks very much. And uh, let me thank the members of the committee for their questions. And uh, thanks. Thank Dr. Shetty and the team for the presentation. Um, we we will come back when you call us on to make presentations on the other master plans that we're working on. Um, and uh, we will uh, certainly endeavor to ensure together with the team that we can act on those matters that the uh, members of the committee have raised and that uh, where there are weaknesses, uh, we can strengthen our capacity to be able to do our work better. And uh, thanks thanks very much for giving us this opportunity this afternoon, Chairperson. Thank you, thank, thank you, uh, Deputy Minister, for, 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 the, for that party note. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, from ourselves, on behalf of the, of the, of the uh, Select Committee, uh, I want to take this opportunity to to express gratitude uh, also to to the department led by the DM uh, and Dr. Chetty and, and the team in terms of uh, the presentations uh, that was made, but also uh, uh, the opportunity to give much more clarity in terms of engagement and questions uh, and discussions that were posed by honorable members. It uh, uh, contributed to ensure that there is a a uh, much more convergence and clarity in terms of where we are going in this in this sector, the the uh, the, the challenges, uh, the history uh, uh, of the of, of the challenges that the sector is going through, uh, the interventions made, but, but more than that, uh, I think the 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 fact that uh, uh, from last year, uh, the president was able to say from this sector. Uh, what are the challenges? What are your key programmatic er areas that has to be focused on? And we were able uh, to ensure that uh, the master plan is developed for the sector, and that the buy-in from the from the key uh, stakeholders uh, in in the sector. But more than that, the commitment also made by the workers, uh, the manufacturers, uh, and labour uh, and government to to rally around the, the master plan. Uh, the key commitments that were made uh, in line of the pillars of the master plan and the progress that we have raised, but of course, taking into account uh, the challenges that were brought by COVID and how you have responded towards those challenges. Uh, uh, what is more critical is, 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 uh, is, is, is the, the ability to, to make sure that the, the bi-local is much more, is much more, is much more popularized, particularly given the opportunities that are in the sector that we have outlined in terms of uh, 
the the number of drops uh, that are that are that, 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 that the sector creates, uh, and 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 also its contribution to the to the uh, uh, to the gross and domestic products, and uh, uh, the commitment to, to to double that contribution uh, to the GDP. I think it 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 it, it, put, it, 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 it allies our fears and also put us in a much more better position to say. Uh, across 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 the the, the the province, there were challenges, but interventions in terms of the the, the collaboration by the agencies, in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, the illegal uh, import is, is to a certain extent uh, arrested and brought to a, and, and, and brought to a halt. But uh, mindful of the fact that uh, what is critical is to ensure that indeed uh, the the sector. Uh, is uh, 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 rescued and uh, repositioned within the broader re-emerging uh, re industrial strategy of the government. And on that note, uh, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, thank you. James, uh, Mr. 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 Mung, sorry, before you adjourn, we've got two sets of minutes we need to adopt. Yes, yes, time to do let's, that. Let's, 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 let's probably then... Uh, uh, allow the the, the, the the DM and the team uh, and then let the members uh, just uh, deal with those minutes. Thank you, thank Chair. You, thank you, DM and Dr. Chetty. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Right. Uh, let's let's uh, deal with the first set of minutes, uh, uh, Nadia. Chair, can you see? Yes, yes, yes. No, uh, yes. The, minutes, the minutes of the 25th of August uh, that dealt with the consideration of uh, the gambling boards. I want to believe that honorable members had ample opportunity to go through the minutes. Uh, is there any uh, reflection that uh, correction that members would want to make mm -hmm. in terms of the, the minutes? Uh, the attendance, any correction on the attendance and the apologies? That is stated. Let's go to the members of the provincial legislature. Uh, those were the members of the provincial legislature that attended. And then uh, the department uh, representative. Okay. Next, 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 next page. Uh, that's open and welcome, and then they've greeted by the departments. Okay. Uh, that's the the uh, a reflection in terms of uh, how the provinces voted. Uh, can we then, uh, uh, in the absence of any correction, uh, get a move for the adoption of the minutes? I would so move, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Fai, for a move to adopt the minutes. Can you get a second? Dango. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Dango. Yes, for seconding, uh, the minutes of the 21st of July uh, 2020, can we get to the second set of minutes? Okay, can you see? Yes, yes, yes. This the 21st is the, of July. 21st of July. Yes. Let's 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 go down. Uh, I hope other mm -hmm. members can be able to see the the uh, how the uh, consideration of the supplementary adjustment adjustment budgets uh, went on. Uh, next page. That's the uh, how the report was adopted. Uh, those in favor, uh, those that uh, abstained, and those that were against. Let's go to the next uh, budget vote report. Uh, Department of uh, Trade and Industry. Uh, that is the reflection of how members uh, voted. Uh, those in favor and uh, those that abstain and uh, those that voted against. Uh, let us move to the uh, next uh, 
uh, earlier we speak to uh, what is important is that the report was adopted and then uh, uh, the consideration of the minutes of 9 June, the consideration of uh, the minutes of the 3rd of July, consideration of the minutes of the 9th of July, the consideration of the minutes of the 10th of July, and the consideration of the minutes of the uh, 15th of July, and then the closing remarks. Uh, is there any correction from honorable members? Uh, in the absence of any uh, addition, subtraction, can then we can we then get a move for the adoption of the minutes? I'll move for the adoption, Chair. Thank you, thank you, honorable Patterson, for moving. Uh, can we get a seconder? I'll second it, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, honorable Dango. Uh, honorable members, our minutes. Uh, our both set of minutes are therefore duly adopted. Uh, is there any further item, uh, uh, Maria? Yes, Chair, yes. just an announcement um, that there's a, a meeting with the Portfolio Committee on Trade and Industry tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock um, to address outstanding matters relating to the National Lotteries Commission. Immediately after this meeting, I'll be sh sharing the link of the meeting with members. For the meeting with DTIC, um, the PC on um, trade tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Okay. Chair. Uh, members, uh, that's the announcement. Uh, are, we, are we happy? Yes, that's fine, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Honourable Browder said, I, if I, I will write to my dear, but I'll have to uh, tender my apologies for that meeting. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Bratisseth. I will also be in a in, a, in, a, in, in, in a, another meeting. But I think uh, what is critical is that uh, members, uh, uh, those that can be able to, do, to, to to log in, let's attend that meeting because it's an update on the on the issues of Lord Tari that uh, uh, was canvassed last time on the department. So, Honorable members, uh, I want to believe uh, that uh, that was the last time on item on the agenda. Uh, from the committee secretary, are we, are, we, are we happy with that? Yes, she. Yes, she. We've concluded the, the issues for today. Thank you. Let me again express gratitude on behalf of the committee and the chair for the successful convening and holding of uh, this select committee uh, of trade uh, and competition. Uh, small business, employment and labor and tourism. Uh, indeed, uh, it has been a long day. Honorable uh, members, uh, the meeting stand adjourned. Thank you, thank you. And the team from uh, the Secretariat, uh, you are duly also uh, appreciated in terms of your effort in ensuring that this meeting is duly convened. Thank you, thank you, honorable members. Thank you, Mr. Moimang. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Leduma. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to have a management meeting now, considering the fact that Chair has been having problems with his connection. I'll possibly speak to Chair about maybe rescheduling that management meeting. Can you hear me? Your mic is off, Luduma. Luduma, your mic is off. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm saying uh, man, next week, man, the management meeting. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, I'm saying we can. You can call the management meeting next week, man. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but you and I have, have been nominated to assist with local government hey. next week. I saw that, and also I'm next to Tupac, and then I said I, I wanted to check Mark that I'm not even a content advisor for Tupac's uh, uh, committee. Mm. But I'm also in, in that list. I'm next to you, also next to Tupac. Mm. 
And then I said, I, I don't know. Even I don't even know the structure and what is expected from us. Yeah, I spoke to Mark when I saw that list yesterday. I spoke to Mark and I asked him, listen, what are the expectations? So you see, to me, it's primarily around the report writing. Because I think uh, they nominated something like three or f some of them, like f some provinces have nine, other provinces have five um, municipalities that were identified. But what happens to the to the the NCOP guys? That's a good question. We don't I know. Don't I really do not understand this thing. We don't know. But all I know is that um, I asked Mark, listen, hopefully we're not going to be expected to travel. And so he said, no, it's basically just, um, it's a virtual sure. session. It's a virtual session. So we can, but uh, all I received was the concept document. I haven't seen any program. No, I haven't seen it, but I know NCO people, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I don't, um, because they're there. It's there. Yeah. It's like a... It's the function, thing. actually. Yeah. It's a, it's a plenary thing. Mm. And it's sort of, it's a house thing. Mm. So there are house assigned support staff, you know, or yeah. support staff that is, and then that are assigned to support the house. And are those, those who are supporting the committees of the house. So this thing, uh, -uh it needs to be clarified. At an administrative level. Otherwise, yeah. we'll be uh, doing house matters now, and then others not doing. Yeah, anything. I just wait. I just wanna. I just wanna make sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. 